Welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. My name is Adam and I'll be your moderator. We're joined by Penny Reed from eAssist Dental Solutions and she'll be discussing revenue cycle management and how best to support your dental practice. Penny is the CEO of Practice Booster and eAssist Publishing. If you have any questions, please add them into the Q&A section and we'll reply via email within two business days. And Henry Shen is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. Penny, over to you. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, Henry Schein. It's a pleasure to be with you guys this evening, and welcome to the Dental Match Game. Are you and your practice soulmates? It's always fun when we have a theme that's a little bit oriented around uh, the time of year. Makes, makes it a little fun. Um, Adam did a great job of introducing me, so uh, I, I won't stay on this slide for too long. Very passionate about the business of dentistry, and it's an honor to be with you. So, Let's talk about eAssist for a moment, and then we'll get into uh, the matching game and, and really helping you get the results that you want related to revenue cycle management. eAssist, if you're not familiar with us, um, we invented optimized revenue cycle management and front office services for dentists. So for more than 10 years, we've been providing outsourced dental billing. For those of you that have not uh, heard me share before about eAssist, I actually discovered eAssist from a client of mine who had outsourced his dental billing back when I was a full-time practice management coach, and he shared the results that he was getting, and I had to find out more, and it really uh, has helped solve a lot of challenges that many of the clients that I coached had, uh, and to date, we've collected over $8 billion uh, in insurance uh, collections on behalf of our clients, so um, we love what we do, and we love bringing you peace of mind in your practice. We have a variety of services uh, that you will uh, have contact information at the end of this session to find out more about. Our flagship products are our dental uh, insurance billing and aging. We also do credentialing, insurance verification, and eligibility. Uh, we can help you uh, reconcile those crazy EFT uh, transactions that you have, dental accounting and bookkeeping, patient billing. Uh, taking things to the last mile there to help you get uh, the, the rest of your collections after insurance is paid, and also a wonderful program called Full Schedule to not only help keep your hygiene chairs full, but also get treatment reactivated as well. So uh, what I want to share with you uh, this evening and talk with you about is um, how revenue management, revenue cycle management may be a sore spot for your practice, and I'm also going to share a little bit more about what the that terminology means. In one of the last live programs I did, I asked for the audience to raise their hand uh, if they knew what revenue cycle management was. If you're not really sure, you will be 100% sure about what it is uh, before the end of this session. And then six ways to show your practice you care. And probably those are not what you think. Uh, so we'll keep you on your toes with looking at things a little bit differently. And then how to support your practice uh, by speaking its love language, and it won't be what you think. Uh, just an interesting twist and way to look at how to help your practice be successful. So I would like for you to think, and, and if you've got a piece of paper, you may want to jot this down. What is your average monthly collection ratio, ratio percentage? And, and I always like to uh, speak to all spectrums of the audience. Some of you may say, oh, we know that already. Others may say, what in the world is that? Uh, so what we're asking is, do you know what your average uh, dollars that you collect are it, as a percentage to your collectible production, right? Um, we want to get paid 100% of our net production. So hopefully you know what that is. Go ahead and jot that down. And let me share with you what is ideal. So the ideal gross collection ratio um, would be, if you were completely fee-for-service, right, in an ideal world, that would be 100%. The net collection ratio, we should be getting 98% or more um, of that in the practice. And depending on how we're posting, that would show up as a um, gross collection ratio in your practice. Here's the sad part. The average collection ratio across the board in dentistry of collectible production is only 91%. Uh, so here's what that means. Uh, that means that over two thirds of dentists are leaving 9% of collectible revenue on the table each month. So 70% to be exact. So more than likely uh, over two thirds of you 
tuning in to this program are in that exact same boat. And we want to give you some awareness of where some of those leaks in your revenue cycle management may be. And that's what we'll be sharing with you this evening. So if you put the pencil to paper, and, and I believe it's Simon Sinek that says start with why. What's our why? Well, this lost revenue can really add up. So if you take your average dental practice uh, collected revenue and you were to look at 9% of that, so to speak, uh, not being collected over the course of a 30 year, and if you've just started in practice, don't lose heart, that time will fly by. Over a 30 year span in practice, that's 4 million, a little bit over 4 million. So dentists, um, that's more than many will accumulate in their retirement plan. Dental teams, that is revenue that could go toward your retirement plan, your incentive plan and improvements in the practice. So we've got a really big why uh, over that span of time to tighten things up and, and find ways to improve upon. So I mentioned that I would share with you what revenue cycle management is, a little bit more about that. And we're displaying this for you uh, in, in a visual here is a pipeline. And I could really spend the entire session this evening on this particular slide, and I won't, yet we will be on it for quite a while because I think it really displays the opportunities and the areas where we really want to tighten things up. And then once we get to the end sum of the picture, I think it will, will really spell out what revenue cycle management is. So, so the patient schedules... Uh, and then at some point, uh, we're verifying their insurance. So you'll see that that's bolded because that really relates to the revenue cycle piece. The patient's seen for a diagnosis. Uh, and then next, there's a treatment plan. And then either the patient schedules or we actually do treatment today. So what I want you to think about uh, when you're looking at this pipeline and how I define revenue cycle management for audiences is, um, is everything related to getting paid for treatment that, that isn't specific to the clinical procedure. So in other words, there's some pre-work that we do with the insurance verification, being sure that we have the right information from the patients, and also the financial discussion that takes place with the patient, right? That all hinges on accurate data. So beyond the clinical treatment, uh, the conversations pre-work, up to the treatment being completed, that's really where the revenue cycle piece begins. Like it takes place the minute that, that the fees are charged out, but there's definitely some pre-work that needs to be done. So you'll see uh, that there's a little, um, I, I, I'm not a, a plumber, right? But you've got a, a fixing there in between the, the pipes where we've got a potential for a leak. And we'll go in a little bit deeper as to the importance of that. That's, a, that's usually where uh, the leaks begin is not verifying the coverage at all or uh, not verifying it in a timely manner. Or, and frankly, what we hear is offices will say that they don't have time to do it. I can't reinforce enough how important that insurance verification is. And, and we'll circle back to that. Uh, so we want to have that verified before we do the treatment plan. And the reason for that is that that conversation, the treatment plan conversation, and then, you know, the dreaded question from the patient, well, is my insurance going to pay for that? Or what does that cost? We really can't answer that question accurately unless we have the accurate data in the system. So super important that when we go over that treatment plan after the diagnosis is made, and we're beginning to render treatment, that we have that financial discussion before the treatment is rendered, and that we, to the best of our ability, are giving the patient accurate information. All right, so next we move into the patient either having the treatment done or getting uh, the treatment scheduled. And then when they come back in, up at the top of the chart, patient copay collected. So whether you outsource your dental billing uh, to e-assist or you have your dental billing in-house, I can't stress enough how important this is for a variety of reasons. Um, I'm not the world's police officer, yet I can tell you most of your uh, contracted plans specify that the copay is to be uh, obtained at the time of service. So one of the best ways that I can recommend that you do this 
uh, is to number one, if the treatment is over a certain amount, be sure that the patient knows at the time they schedule the appointment, perhaps you do a written financial agreement to say, uh, Mrs. Smith, um, we show that your estimated out-of-pocket for this is going to be $1,250, and this would need to be paid at this visit we, where you come in and have the bridge prep, right? So we, we had the conversation, we get that documented, the patient gets a copy of that, whether that's an a, a electronic signature, right, and, and something that's given to the patient electronically or something that's handed to them. Then when Mrs. Smith comes in for this appointment, the best time to get that copay is before Mrs. Smith is seated in the back. Uh, once the appointment's over, well, a couple of things. Uh, she's already in possession of our product uh, by that point in time. Uh, whether it's a, a permanent uh, situation, uh, if we've we've got same able to do same day uh, E4D or whatever the technology is, um, or she's got a temporary in, and and we definitely permanently modified the tooth structure. So uh, a great way to do this is when the patient comes into the office and we get them checked in, is to say, Mrs. Smith, uh, we know usually when patients are. Uh, finished with their appointment, they've got a lot on their mind and usually thinking about what's next for them during the day. For your convenience, especially if we may have other patients at the counter, let's go ahead and take care of your portion uh, now before we get you to the back, right? So we can make it very positive, make it for their convenience. The pieces tend to flow so much better in the overall accounts receivable when we've actually collected that estimated portion. Uh, so we, we've done that on the front end. Uh, that way, when the patient is complete, their next appointment could even be made from the back uh, or, or the front. Uh, and now we move on to being sure that that claim is sent correctly. Wow, once again, we could have a full program on, well, Penny, tell us what that means. And, and we'll get into more details on that uh, later on in this session. So many things depend on this. Uh, you, you could actually take a screenshot of this slide and then circle it, uh, uh, circle the claim sent, sent correctly and bring it up in your next team meeting because this is where revenue cycle management really becomes a team sport. Uh, we can only convey to the dental benefits plan company that which we've got in our clinical record. And that's everything from our clinical notes to x-rays, intraoral camera images, uh, being sure that if it's a, a replacement prosthesis, what was the original data placement? All of those things work together, whether we're in network, out of network, or even fee for service where patients are paying us in full, and then we're filing the claim on behalf of the patient. Nothing makes for a crankier patient than one that has already paid the practice in full and they're waiting themselves to be reimbursed, and they get something back from the insurance company that says, hey, what was the you know, initial date of placement, or we didn't receive uh, a preoperative x-ray, right? So this takes the entire team working together. I highly recommend having different scenarios and audits uh, within the practice, make a game out of it, uh, when you're having your team meeting, go back through the previous day's patients and, and pick a patient or two randomly and look to see, hey, does our clinical documentation meet the mark? And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. So we get the claim out the door correctly and in a timely manner, uh, and that helps remedy that leak. And then being sure that claims are followed up on for payment. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that sequence. So Again, we know you're busy, probably busier than you've ever been before, uh, and we want to be sure that you're getting paid for what you're rightly owed. Uh, the other would be being sure that those uh, payments are posted timely and correctly. Uh, nothing can be more frustrating or hold up your patient collections on the back end than those payments not being posted, the claims not being closed out, and then the statements sent to patients. So then if there is an additional balance to be collected from the patient, being sure that we're following up on that. Um, I know software programs like Dentrix have features if you're using those for your credit card processing as well. If it's possible to uh, securely keep a credit card on file 
with permission from the patient, uh, encrypted, right? I'm not talking about in a in a recipe box locked away in a filing cabinet, right? We want everything to be encrypted. Uh, then it's great to already have permission from the patients to charge whatever that excess balance is. So once again, if there was no other slide uh, from this evening's presentation that you might want to capture and show to your team, this would be the one to do it, right? And so my goal is that we give you a tip or two uh, in addition to what I've shared already on how to tighten this up or uh, maybe we're playing the matching game. You may determine that eAssist is a perfect solution to utilize our platform to help you solve some of these challenges. All right. So let's go back to that 9% in case you'd forgotten about that stat that I shared with you a moment ago. What would collecting another 9% of your collectible production mean for you? Well, if you're the office manager or you're the practice owner, this will make even more sense, but you've already covered most of your overhead with this, other than what's related to the actual sending of the statements um, or time uh, that you may be paying a team member to follow up on, on some of this, you've already paid the overhead. So most of this 9% would fall straight to profit for the practice owner income, the ability to reward your team at a higher level or to have an incentive plan. So uh, we as a team definitely want to work together to solve this challenge. If you've ever heard the phrase, my end of the boat is not leaking, right? If we've got any money that's being uh, left on the table and not in the bank, then it definitely uh, affects everyone on the team. So are you and your dental practice soulmates it's sort of like a game show, uh, except we're not giving away cars or even points. You can give yourself uh, different points as you ask yourself these questions. So round one, if your claims are dirty and you want to get them squeaky clean, what would you use? I am going to tell you the right answer. Um, a scrub brush, soap, or a cleaning lady with dental billing experience. Actually, I'm kind of thinking that last option might also be a good one. Uh, but the answer is soap. If you're not sure what that is, then, then my challenge would be uh, go in, and do a little research on what a soap note is, right? We want to be sure that we've got great clinical notes. And, and I'll share with you a secret. Whether you outsource your dental billing or you're keeping it in-house, your ability to get claims paid at the highest level, I can't stress enough how important the entire clinical team having knowledge of what soap notes are, having templates in your practice management software so that you've got the subjective part of the notes, the objective, your assessment, and the plan. This is something that the dental benefit plans are looking more and more toward. And in case you haven't noticed, I've been around for a little while. And I can tell you that 30 years ago, what insurance companies asked for when you filed claims, they didn't ask for a whole lot, right? So we're probably not going to revert uh, back to those days. Uh, there's a much higher level of accountability. And especially if we're in network, uh, we've, we've signed on with some of those agreements that we're going to abide by what their requests are. So rather than experience major frustration, uh, if our notes are not how they need to be, I would highly encourage you to spend some time, work with some experts and, and develop the team uh, have some great practice on what does this look like, because the better and more efficient that you can get with having solid clinical notes, that's where your narratives come from. So the answer to number to that first one is soap. All right, round two. I don't know how many points you gave yourself for that one, but, um, you know, however many you want. Uh, so round two, a claim comes back denied due to missing information. You see red and want revenge. You first find ways to streamline your dental billing processes with experts. Fire your front desk team. I'm going to just say, please don't do the second one. Um, or if you need to, at least have a plan, right? Uh, I like to say that with the right training, most everybody can get the job done. Uh, the last would be give up on dentistry. We certainly don't want you to give up on dentistry. So um, the answer would be find ways to streamline your dental billing processes with experts hey, we think outsourcing is a great solution. Uh, and also, uh, 
again, you can definitely work to improve upon some of these things within your team. Last but not least, round three, in case you're wondering how much longer this fun little game will last, you render services for a patient. Ideally, you want the claim to be sent yesterday, whenever it doesn't matter, it will just be denied or within 24 hours with all the information necessary. And as you can guess, uh, within 24 hours, and oh, by the way, electronically, uh, if you are not already sending electronic claims uh, with electronic attachments, I highly encourage you at the end of this session, when you see the contact information, this would be something that I would put on the list in the next 30 days to get done because it not only allows you uh, more accurate, uh, a more accurate way to transmit that information. I think as a country, uh, we're all faced with increased workload and looking for team members to get that done when the dental insurance companies, and I've never worked for one, uh, when they are processing claims, the paper claims and the tangible attachments are usually some of the last things to get processed. So uh, if you've not already made that leap and you're looking for a reason to get it done, uh, let this session be a reason to get that done. Uh, that, that's a must. Um, also, I would like to throw in there, um, if you're looking for the time, there's never been a better time to make a plan to switch from paper charts to using your electronic record in your dental software. Um, that's, that is definitely the way to go. If it's been on your to-do list of, well, one day we'll get that done, today needs to be the day. Put, put a plan in place, put that on your next team meeting agenda and get that done as well. So are you a match? Uh, if you answered one or more questions incorrectly, then the answer is no. Um, good thing is this relationship is still repairable. We just want to um, want to help you speak your dental practice's love language. All right. So one of the love languages, quality time. Do you have time to give your practice your undivided attention? And as I mentioned, I spent many years as a dental practice management coach. And one of the things that we say is uh, there are three priorities in the practice. Um, the patient in the chair, the patient in the chart, and everything else. Well, the patient in the chair, like the, the things that relate to the patient that's in the office, we want to give the patients uh, in the chair and the patients on the phone as much attention as we possibly can. So part of effectively running the practice is being sure that we're setting goals for ourselves and our team and that we're communicating those clearly and that we've got processes in place to track progress and results. So um, you can set up internal processes for accountability and create a culture where it's safe to ask for help. And I know when it comes to revenue cycle management, especially, and the thought of outsourcing that, it can sort of feel like you're maybe waving the little white flag. I know many of my clients felt that way when they were considering outsourcing. If it gives you more quality time with the team to focus more on the big picture of the practice, and driving revenue and delivering excellent service, which I think uh, having quality revenue cycle management does, then that's super important. So be sure that you're making time. I referred a couple of times to having team meetings. That's where a lot of the problems in the practice can get solved. So be sure you're dedicating that. The other is words of affirmation. Uh, you probably think about how much you love your practice all the time, but how do you tell your office and are there dysfunctions in the way? Uh, we're big believers at eAssist in business culture and practice culture. So whether it is revenue cycle issues that you're looking to solve in your practice or overall team performance, this is a book uh, that everyone on our team reads. If you've not read it in your practice, we would highly recommend that you do that. Um, it can not only improve your culture, it can greatly accelerate how your team solves problems. Receiving gifts. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, uh, but how does it translate to dental practice ownership? Well, that 9% of that revenue uh, that may still be on the table for your practice, and maybe if you're tuning into this session, maybe it's more than 9% of your collectible production that's being left on the table. Not only could that fall to the bottom line as profit, when was the last time that you were able to upgrade what you wanted to upgrade in your practice? 
Um, if you were collecting that 100% of what you were rightfully owed, maybe you would have more dollars available to do that software upgrade that you've been waiting on. Maybe you've been waiting to upgrade to the newer version to use the electronic charting. Uh, that revenue could help you do that. And did you know that your practice is most appealing to patients when it's clean and up to date and the team is proud to be there? So one little assignment uh, that you guys may want in a future team meeting is uh, take out a smartphone and, and do a little visual tour of the office, starting outside the front door of the practice, going all the way through the practice and begin to make a wish list of, hey guys, uh, when we get our revenue up, when we increase that collection percentage, these are some improvements that we would like to make in the practice. If your collection percentage is already there, it's still a great exercise. So um, be sure that you're in a position to give your own practice gifts. Next, acts of service. What can we do to make our practice run smoother? Are you utilizing the strengths of your team to reach your goals? And are there tedious tasks that could be outsourced to free up time? Uh, and then you've got more time for treatment planning and scheduling. And did you know that you and or your office manager uh, could take a well-deserved vacation and not have to worry about your revenue cycle management pipeline bursting if you've got more of these systems in place? Um, one thing that I want you to think about uh, on this uh, outsourcing topic is once upon a time, I would imagine most of the lab work that currently gets sent to outside labs. Um, I know I've had some clients that did their own lab work in-house, not only through uh, 3D milling machines, but actually have an in-house uh, in lab. Um, outsourcing is really not as new as we may think it is. And, and it's definitely here to stay for sure. Physical touch. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You don't need to pull out the HR manual um, or call your HR company. Uh, you'll be surprised. This is a little bit different uh, than, than what you may think with physical touch. Do you have someone dedicated on your team to reviewing or touching every single claim that goes out for accuracy? Um, I hope you do. I'll tell you what happens in a lot of offices from what I've seen. All the claims, you know, all the treatment gets posted. It's like, okay, is everything posted? Yep, 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 yep. Boop, right? <laughs> because it's just too easy to press that button and file those claims and not look to see, uh, are the claims clean? As we referred to earlier. So the other would be, are we encouraging cross-training so that all of the team can jump in and help out in different areas of operational efficiency? We realize that outsourcing may not be the right thing for everyone. And we also know that in most well-run practices, there are lists of things that clinical team members can do uh, to assist the administrative area and vice versa uh, when the time arises. Have clinical team members look through, right? Day of, hey, these are things that have already been posted. These are the claims that are already batched to go out. And do we have everything that we need? Was there a initial date of placement that was missing? You know, what can we do as a team so that when we close out today's day of business, that the clinical notes are, are accurate, that everything that we need is in there? Also in the morning huddle, right? Knowing who's coming in. Hey, we need preoperative x-rays on these, uh, on these patients. So um, also, uh, while our revenue cycle management only has eyes for you, the more eyes on the roadblocks, the better. So once again, whether it's an, an outside team like eAssist or your inside team, really making it more than only one person set of eyes, uh, looking at this, having someone else double check, we want you to get paid in a timely manner. Uh, communication, that's the name of the game, whether it's communicating with a patient about what their financial expectation is about treatment or great communication amongst your team. So, you know, think to yourself, uh, how would you rate your current level of communication? Are you encouraging a morning huddle, a weekly team meeting, or a monthly goal setting powwow? I would also have as part of your team meetings, Anything related to uh, outstanding claims that haven't been paid? You know, what do you need help with? At eAssist, we send a daily report to our offices with uh, things that we may need for the previous uh, night or previous days reviewed claims. We also send weekly reports. 
back when I full-time coached offices, the practices that worked with the assist, I would encourage them to use those reports where uh, maybe it's a narrative that we needed help with um, as far as, can you tell us more about what happened during this procedure or hey, we're looking for uh, these particular items or or questions to be answered so we can get these paid. The more that the team is aware of what is needed to effectively get reimbursement, the more they can help. So communication expectations start with you. Uh, Defining how we can work better as a team, not only in revenue cycle management, but other areas of the practice as well. So On the lines of communication, insurance verification, uh, the majority of claims, and I referred to this when we were looking at the pipeline, are denied due to inaccurate patient and insurance information. I want to reread that bullet because I think sometimes, and I do this too, um, we make it so uh, daunting. Oh, there's so much to do with insurance administration. Is there anybody that has all of the answers? Right. Well, we pride ourselves at, um, on the ESS publishing side, the practice booster side, as being experts in insurance administration for sure. And I want you to think about this. That's not what holds up payment with most claims. It's not having the appropriate uh, patient information or payer information or knowing whether or not the patient has benefits available at all. So while the more complicated uh, insurance administration factors do uh, weigh in, insurance verification, while it is time consuming, in itself is fairly simple, right? It's just having the time and making the time to do it. Uh, So most dental administrators lack that time to properly verify benefits, coverage, deductibles, and frequencies. So outsourcing can be an option if you're keeping it in-house. Be sure that you've got a team member that is accountable and dedicated uh, to find these things out. And then if they get behind, that they can ask for help or say, hey, I need to have some quiet time where I'm not answering the phone, not checking patients out. Also, cross-train other team members to be able to do this. So having that verification, the eligibility and the benefits breakdown on your patients uh, before they even come in, same day, super important for getting all the reimbursement you can. And if you can do that in-house, super. If you need to outsource it, we're here for you. So this not only impacts the insurance um, uh, payments and the timeliness of that, it impacts the trust level that the patients have with us because we're able to give them the right information. So over on the side, um, you'll see a little fun fact here. Um, Two thirds of Americans are enrolled in private insurance and 76% of those plans are PPOs. A lot of change. I imagine that that trend will absolutely continue. So once again, uh, I mentioned earlier that you'd have some tips and takeaways. If this is something that you're keeping in house, Definitely, you need to look at, do you have the appropriate amount of administrative support to help you get this done? If it's something that you're looking to outsource, um, be sure at the end of this session to reach out and see what we can do to help you with that. All right, timely and accurate claim submission. So uh, claims are often denied due to incorrect codes, missing documentation and attachments, or severe delays in submission, timely filing. You know what, sometimes those delays in submission, it's, it's usually not someone's intentions to delay in filing. Uh, it can be something that comes up in the practice. Maybe someone uh, suddenly moves away, right? Or you have someone retire or um, heaven forbid, maybe they're in an accident, right? And they're out for several weeks. It's, it's often little things that can lead to big things in the practice. Uh, But the incorrect coding, uh, we definitely have resources for that uh, to help you with that. And that's something that we provide to our uh, dental billing clients uh, is an online subscription uh, to be able to have the most accurate uh, information on how to use those CDT codes. Um, So having an up-to-date resource is imperative. And then we can't reiterate enough, claims should be sent within 24 hours of completing services. I would also say, especially if you're keeping your uh, insurance filing in-house, your electronic payer reports are generated for a reason. So whether those come up on your dashboard 
in your practice management software, or if you're getting some sort of report emailed to you every day, look to see what claims have been accepted, which ones have been rejected. It hasn't been that long ago. It's been within the last couple of weeks. Something broke um, in one of the electronic links uh, for an office that I spoke with. Um, they didn't realize, and, and they had not outsourced their, their dental billing. This is something that, that they had in-house. They didn't realize that one of their insurance plans, something had gotten broken between that payer and the clearinghouse. And so two months worth of claims had not made it from the practice through the clearinghouse to the payer. And there was a team member that had been out of the office. Normally that team member would have checked that. And it wasn't until it began to show up uh, in their numbers, right? It showed up as a lack of collections, a, a huge one, that they realized what had happened. So uh, definitely look every day at those submission reports and if there are some uh, claims that uh, this was actually showing that they batched, it just was giving an error report back. So that's definitely something uh, that, that you want to be sure that you do. And then the other is just a tip, even if you don't participate in with insurance, uh, most uh, of the time, like I'm just going to say 99% of the time, what you do, the treatment that you do, unless the patient has requested some sort of HIPAA waiver, should be reported to the insurance company on the claim. So be in the know, uh, definitely you want to ask your uh, Henry Shine Field Service representative for more information on coding resources. Uh, these codes change every year, little fun fact, they used to only change every other year. Uh, and often, uh, just because you have a code, it doesn't mean that, that it will be reimbursed yet often not having the right information, not using the right code can really result in um, holdups in payment or lack of payment. All right, so let's talk about insurance accounts receivable follow-up. And this stat over on the right hand side of the slide, um, I'm going to use my opportunity to get a drink of water for you to just read that and then I'll talk about it. The average time on hold with an insurance company is 43 minutes per claim. Uh, I don't think insurance companies are adding more people to answer phone calls. That's not that's not been what uh, what I've noticed, right? We're not saying, oh yeah, I called XYZ plan, only had to hold for five minutes. Um, so being efficient, uh, knowing what to ask, uh, often having contact people. Uh, at those carriers uh, that, that can answer your questions. It's now more important than ever uh, to stay on top of that. And unfortunately, it just continues to become a more frustrating process. So um, the majority of dental administrators don't have time to devote hours on the phone with insurance companies, and you may not have room for that in your payroll. Uh, so revenue is definitely left on the table and claims are not followed up on for payment. Um, if those are stacking up, uh, there are definitely statutes of uh, limitation, not only for filing claims, but that would also include getting them getting them paid within a reasonable amount of time. So uh, be sure that those are followed up on every 14 days and that uh, timely appeals are being sent when necessary. And often uh, we find that when we're onboarding a client with e-assist, their team members didn't really know how to do appeals. In other words, if the insurance company denied it, they might send in one round of supporting documentation to try to get it paid. But then beyond that, a lot of dental team members are not equipped with the tools to know how to effectively appeal a claim. So uh, it's definitely time consuming with that follow-up. Uh, so why you need dental billing and coding expertise? Um, you know, again, we've talked about time. We've talked about experience. Uh, super important. So this not only affects the practice revenue, it also affects patient trust. So this is not a marketing uh, session. It's not a marketing webinar, yet nothing gives uh, patients more fuel for the fire for a Google review or a Facebook review than for them to have an unmet expectation. And we, can, we don't have a crystal ball. We can never fully know uh, what we will be reimbursed. 
Um, but it's, it's definitely a way to break trust if we're not giving patients accurate information. So uh, number one, we need to be on top of our game as far as knowing what codes to use, what information to send. And then also when we're communicating that to the patient to the best of our ability, uh, we want to be sure that they really understand what their financial responsibility is so that we not only uh, don't lose a patient, but we're also protecting the brand of the practice, right? Because our patients are happier and they have less fuel to the fire uh, to wind up complaining on social media, which seems to be more and more common, right? That, that's definitely not a trend that we're seeing decrease. So how do dental billing processes make or break patient care? Um, it's getting more and more complex. Um, it's more difficult uh, to staff our offices. You know, that's something that we've definitely found um, since the pandemic. And we, when, when we are looking at how do, you, how do you grow a practice, how do you engage the patients in such a way that they not only want to come back, they want to refer their friends and family uh, it's difficult to do that when we're face down in the paperwork, right? Or we're, we've sequestered ourselves. You know, we've got, we're on hold with an insurance company. We have a crick in our neck because we've been on hold for 39 of those 43 minutes. And we're trying to take care of a patient um, that's standing right in front of us. So we want to provide excellent service. And we also want to reduce the stress and tension in the practice. Uh, so patients notice when they're not our primary focus or the appointment feels rushed or even more fun, right? They receive that EOB uh, showing a denial and maybe it is a mistake on our part. You know, every denial is not a mistake, but, but sometimes it is. Uh, or they get an unexpected statement for additional payment. Uh, one thing that I did not mention earlier when we, when we were back at the beginning of the uh, revenue cycle management pipeline. And that is on the whole el eligibility piece. And I want to tie this into your morning huddle and also your technology. When we ask a patient the question, uh, has anything changed with your dental insurance, right? Or, you know, whether it's on uh, a, a piece of paper at the sign in, right? Has anything changed? Or we're asking verbally, has anything changed? And their response is, no, it's all the same. Um, do they even know what's in our system? So more encouragement for uh, you guys to update your technology if, if you can, uh, electronic check-in, sign-in with your practice management software is one way. If the patient can see what we have in the system, um, so if, if you're okay with printing good old-fashioned routing slips or the patient information form or even just a portion of it, and highlight to show the patient, uh, you know, hey, if, if I'm the patient, Penny Reed, here's the information we have on file. Is this your current address? Is this your phone number? Um, we show that you have Aetna dental benefit plan through your husband's work. Until I can see what's in the system and you're asking me, has anything changed with your dental benefit plan? I, I don't know. Um, share a little funny story here and then we'll get back to the uh, ranch. I was at the Yankee dental meeting had done a presentation similar to this. And it was uh, late, it was dark. I was heading back to the hotel from uh, the convention center. And I said, where are the shuttles that go back to the hotel? And so they said, well, you go down this hall and then when it dead ends at the windows, you turn right. And then you'll see uh, the area to get on the shuttles is there. So I go out, I see the shuttles, I go out and I'm looking to see, I'm looking for the sign on the shuttle that tells me where the shuttle is going to. And uh, I'm looking and the, the bus driver opens the door. It's freezing cold outside, by the way. So, I mean, I can feel the heat with the heaters coming out of the, the van. And he says, oh, all of the buses go to the same place. Well, the question that I didn't ask was where might that be? So I was like, oh, okay, I hop on. Um, at least it was warm. So a whole bunch of people get on, we go around, they let everybody out. It's like, okay, this is the parking lot. So I'm like, all right, well, I must be the only person on this shuttle that's um, heading to the hotel. Well, we get back to the convention center at the exact same place where I got on the bus. And I said, um, is, is this not the bus that goes to the Seaport Hotel? They're like, oh, this is the bus that goes to the parking lot, right? So this was a case where 
I'm, I'm looking for the shuttle, right? And he's saying, oh, they all go to the same place. What my expectation was, right? And what the reality was and what was actually happening were completely different. It's the same thing uh, when we're saying, is anything changed with your insurance? There's no sign on our bus <laughs> to tell them which insurance plan we actually have in the system. So uh, either by showing them uh, and we can use the route slip or perhaps turn a computer screen around or if we have e-check-in uh, that's more kiosk based, uh, then they could confirm whether or not that's actually the plan that they have. So just a little funny story to add some levity to that. Um, did you know the number one reason that patients leave a dental practice is because they feel neglected? And let me say this, that, that's not necessarily that they feel neglected by the dentist. You know, they feel neglected that the team isn't greeting them promptly, right? Maybe they're not getting enough attention on the phone, but it's mainly, are we paying attention to them when they're in the office or are we paying more attention to paperwork? Or sometimes um, a lot of dental teams have really great relationships on the team. I've also seen it where the team pays a lot of attention to each other, yet not very much attention to the patient. So. Patients want our attention. They want to be called by name. They want to know that uh, their relationship with us is important and that they're not just another, uh, just another number, just another chart number. But a close second is feeling deceived by an incorrect treatment plan, right? So while we may not have 100% control over all of it, uh, we want to take control of everything that we possibly can, starting with the beginning of that revenue management cycle pipeline. So one of our uh, goals, actually it's our ultimate mission, is to deliver peace of mind to dentists and to their teams. That's what our company was founded on. Uh, if you don't know a lot about eAssist, um, one of our co-founders is our CEO, uh, the CEO of ESS Dental Solutions. I'm the CEO of ESS Publishing, Dr. James Anderson. He encountered the same challenge that many of you face today. He had a dynamic person on his team that was handling the dental billing and she moved. And he thought, well, uh, medical profession has been outsourcing medical billing for years. We'll just outsource dental billing. And this was over 10 years ago. And what he found was nobody was doing it. Uh, so he and our other co-founder, Sandy Odell, set out to figure this out. And they did it by outsourcing the dental billing for the offices that they had at the time. And then they added, you know, the first dozen. Uh, and we've been at it ever since. And we're always looking to improve our processes and also bring more peace of mind to more dental practices across the country. So you may be wondering, how do we learn more, uh, not only about uh, the education uh, that, that Henry Shine provides, but also about eAssist? And uh, first, I want to say thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be with you. It's always a pleasure. I will turn it over to you so you can share with our attendees how they can get more information. Thank you so much, Penny, for the insightful and fun presentation. Everyone attending tonight will receive the recording via email sometime in the next week. And lastly, if anyone's interested in attending future Henry Shine webinars, visit henryshinedental.com webinars for our upcoming schedule. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great night.